Lockheed P-38 Lightning. Unfairly overshadowed by its single-engined compatriots, the P-47 and P-51, Lockheed's Lightning was a formidable long-range fighter, proving hard-hitting, maneuverable, and highly effective in all the many theaters in which it served. Fighter, bomber, night fighter, reconnaissance aircraft, air ambulance, torpedo bomber, and even glider tug, there seemed to be no limit to the adaptability of the Lockheed P-38. It was one of the brilliant trio of pursuit fighters produced by the USA during World War II, and the only one to remain in series production throughout the entire period of American participation in the war. Originally conceived to meet a 1937 requirement for a high-altitude fighter, the Lockheed design team under H.L. Hibbard embarked on a radical twin-engine, twin-boom design there being no engine available to meet the performance demands stipulated by the Air Force in a single-engine layout. Known as the Lockheed Model 22, the design was accepted by the U.S. Army Air Corps on 23 June of 1937, and a single XP-38 prototype was ordered. This was flown by Lieutenant B.S. Kelsey at Marchfield, Southern California on 27 January 1939. Two weeks later, the aircraft was flown across the continent in seven hours, two minutes, with two refueling stops, but was destroyed when it undershot on landing at Mitchell Field. Following this outstanding performance, a batch of 13 YP-38 pre-production aircraft was ordered, although the aircraft differed from the prototype by having Allison engines driving outward rotating propellers in place of the prototype's inward rotating examples. Armament configuration saw the introduction of a 37mm Oldsmobile cannon and four machine guns. Following testing with the early production batch, the U.S. Army Air Corps placed a further order for 66 production examples, which were to be fitted with the original armament configuration utilized on the XP-38, one 23mm Madsen cannon and four 12.7mm Browning machine guns. Despite the increasing numbers ordered, the aircraft remained largely within training units, and it was not until the introduction of the fully combat standard machine, the P-38 Delta, in August of 1941, that regular U.S. Army Air Force pilots conducted wide-scale mock combat with the type. America's entry into the war following Pearl Harbor was greeted by the availability of just 47 P-38s. Production was quickly stepped up with the improved Echo model, equipped with the revised armament and Curtis electric propellers. It was this variant that would allow the U.S. Army Air Force to achieve its first German kill of the war when a Focke-Wulf FW-200 Condor was downed within hours of the USA's declaration of war. Meanwhile, the RAF had expressed an interest in the P-38, now known as the Lightning, and placed an order for 667 aircraft in March of 1940. However, as a result of an American order banning the export of the turbo superchargers, the aircraft proved to have disappointing performance, and the order was cancelled after only a handful had been delivered. Lockheed continued to develop the Lightning further with the introduction of the Foxtrot model. This had an increased top speed and the provision of underwing racks for bombs or torpedoes. It was this variant that equipped 27 squadrons of the U.S. Army Air Force in the Pacific Theater during 1943 and it was the drop tank equipped version of a detachment from the 339th Fighter Squadron, 347th Fighter Group, that intercepted and destroyed the Japanese aircraft carrying Admiral Isoruku Yamamoto. This was a distance of 550 miles or 885 kilometers from the squadron's base, the European Theater. Meanwhile, the P-38 was in constant action in Europe and the Mediterranean, earning the German nickname Der Gabelschwanz Teufel the fork-tailed devil. Despite this name, the P-38 did not prove entirely suitable for combat with single-engine fighters of the Luftwaffe. This was learned at some cost during the first bomber escort flights to Berlin from bases in England. Nevertheless, reconnaissance models of the Lightning developed alongside the fighter variants and mapped huge areas of occupied Europe, utilizing their high altitude and speed to evade interception. Shortcomings in the fighter versus fighter combat role proved largely academic at this time due to the buildup of P-47 and P-51 squadrons in Europe. Henceforth, the P-38 tended to be committed to ground attack tasks in this theater of war. It achieved great distinction during the buildup of the Allied invasion. Pacific Combat 
Further improvements continued to be made to the Lightning, resulting in the P-38 Juliet and the P-38 Lima models. The most noticeable feature was the introduction of chin fairings under the nose of the engines to enclose the intercooler intakes. Improved models continued to be delivered to all squadrons, but it was in the Pacific Theater, and particularly over the Pacific Ocean, where the Lightning's long-range ability on combat patrol was appreciated by the U.S. Army Air Force pilots. By the end of 1944, P-38s were serving with a total of 34 squadrons in the Western Pacific and Southeast Asia. Two-seat night fighter. Produced too late for the war in Europe, the P-38 Mike was a two-seat variant. It was equipped with a primitive night interception radar, which was operated by a crewman seated directly behind the pilot in cramped elevated rear seat. Serving with the 5th Fighter Command, the radar-equipped night lightnings saw only limited combat in the Pacific. During the final year of the war, the adaptability of the P-38 allowed the development of personnel pods mounted on the underwing racks, which were utilized for emergency casualty evacuation. Other variants were tested as glider tugs. Although the P-38 largely disappeared from frontline squadron use following the end of World War II, two further variants were developed. The XP-49 featured powerful continental engines and a pressure cabin for high-altitude research. The XP-58, chain lightning, which was in effect an enlarged lightning with an interchangeable nose and four-gun turret, was proposed as a ground attack aircraft. The variant model first flew in June of 1944, but no requirement was issued by the U.S. Army Air Force and the aircraft was subsequently scrapped. Europe and North Africa Over Northern Europe, the P-38 always struggled, but found itself far more suited to the climate and operations of the North African and Mediterranean theaters of operation. Lockheed's P-38 scored its first kill in the European theater on 14 August 1942, when the 33rd Fighter Squadron P-38 Echoes flying from Iceland destroyed a maraudering FW-200 Condor. Soon after, the first lightnings indeed the first U.S. fighters to deploy direct to the U.K. made the long transatlantic flight from the States. These P-38 Foxtrots of the 1st and 14th fighter groups reached the U.K. in the summer of 1942. The 14th flying the P-38's first operational missions from U.K. in late July. Both groups continued operations until being posted to the Mediterranean theater for Operation Torch. Over North Africa, the Lightning soon established itself as a formidable fighter, notching up victories at a high rate. In the MTO, the Lightning proved its worth again and again, often at the forefront of operations thanks to its long range and heavy firepower. The Bomber Escort From mid-1943, the Lightning returned to combat operations from UK bases, escorting the heavy bombers of the 8th Air Force on their strikes against Germany. With the P-47 not yet mature enough for full-scale service, the P-40 having proved unsuited to operations over Europe, and the P-51 Bravo not even near service, the P-38 was the fighter of choice for the important bomber escort role. Unfortunately, the aircraft was always in short supply since it was being built in fewer numbers than other American fighters. Its Allison engines were also notoriously unreliable in the cold and damp climate of northern Europe often leaving many of the meager force on the ground due to failed power plants. Nevertheless, Lightning units were still able to down the Luftwaffe's ME-109 and FW-190 fighters. Although the fight was generally at the disadvantage of the U.S. Airmen, and no one was sad to see the P-38 go. The P-38's final ETO role was with the Tactical 9th Air Force, strafing and bombing targets from April of 1944 in preparation for D-Day. CBI and the Pacific In the skies over the Pacific and Far East, the Lightning suffered less from the reliability problems that had plagued it over Europe and deservedly gained its reputation as a foe to be respected. Having always struggled over Northern Europe, the P-38 was able to prove its true potential in the China-Burma-India CBI Pacific theaters. The very first of the type's hundreds of kills was scored off the Aleutian Islands on 4 August 1942 when a pair of Kawanishi flying boats was downed. The Lightning carried on scoring air-to-air -air kills right into 1945, many Japanese veterans declaring that it was among the types most feared by the fighter pilots. 
U.S. records justify this fear, for they show that in excess of 100 pilots achieved ace status in the CBI Pacific theaters, and more than 1,800 enemy aircraft were shot down. In spite of the P-38's early promise, few of the fighters could be spared for the Pacific since the majority of U.S. resources was being directed at the war in Europe. Still, in early 1943, the Lightning was well-placed to undertake one of the most audacious aerial operations in the war. In the aftermath of Guadalcanal, Japan's Admiral Yamamoto decided to make a tour of forward bases while also boosting morale by his ever-popular presence. Taking out Yamamoto U.S. forces intercepted radio transmissions relating to Yamamoto's trip, including the fact that he would be traveling in an escort of Betty Bombers on 18 April 1943. Flying along over Water Leg at ultra-low level, the P-38 force was able to avoid detection and destroyed Yamamoto's Betty, a blow to morale from which the Japanese never really recovered. With the end of the campaign in North Africa, P-38 availability at last began to meet demand with the result that some of the fighters could be spared for service in the CBI theater. A number of P-38 Gulfs was made available, both the aircraft and crews being sent straight from North Africa and first arriving in the summer of 1943. CBI Service Flying air-to-air -air and dive-bombing sorties from bases in China, the P-38 soon began taking a toll of Japanese warplanes. Continuing to fight through Burma, the CBI Lightning scored their final victories in the spring of 1945. With the Allies continuing their island-hopping campaign across the Pacific, the U.S. Army Air Force's Lightning fighters were able to engage hordes of Imperial Japanese Army and Navy fighters, with a number of top bases emerging. The stars among which were Dick Bong with 40 kills and Tom McGuire with 38. The last pilot to become a P-38 ace in World War II was Major George Levine, who downed an Emily on either 26 April or 21 June 1945 in a P-38 Lima, having scored his first kill against a Japanese biplane over the Aleutians in a P-38 Echo in September of 1942.